Okay, today we're going to talk about this. This is a Kickstarter project that I backed called the Final Press. Um, this is what came in the package with my Kickstarter thing. You get the device itself, a little carrying case, an extra spring. And this is a uh, mason jar cap that is designed to have the press actually go through it with a little uh, grommet here for cold brew. Um, they say you can just stick this in there and it works kind of like a primula where this thing is just embedded in the water for, you know, 24 hours, whatever. But it's a nice little cap to hold that. Okay, and the way this works um, is there's the basket on the bottom here, which you can undo, and you'll see that it's just a basket with holes in it. Um, they're actually, it's pretty well made. This is very nicely uh, machined. Um, it's very lightweight, doesn't have a lot of uh, heft to it at all. Uh, you can sort of see the typical screen in there. It's kind of like a a metal filter you would see for a lot of things like an AeroPress. Um, and then there is this piece here, which is a plunger. Um, and you unscrew the top here, and there's your spring-loaded bit. And the plunger can step like that. And the idea is you fill this with coffee, assemble it all together, and you screw the top on. And then this whole thing sits in your mug for a specified amount of time. And then at the end, you do this a couple times to kind of release flavor, as they say, and you have a nice cup of coffee. So now let's talk about the reality of this. It doesn't work. And here's really why. What you're looking at here is 16 grams of ground coffee. The instructions for this say to use two teaspoons. That's a teaspoon. Generally, when you're talking about making coffee, you refer to two tablespoons of coffee per six ounce cup. This says teaspoons. So if I just take one teaspoon out of here, you can see how much is left out of 16 grams of coffee. In other words, if you wanted to actually get a legitimate 16 to 1 ratio dose in a mug or cup of coffee, you can't unless you're using essentially no water. So let's, for fun here, do this. Here's our thing, tear it on a scale, and I'll put two teaspoons of coffee into here. That's three grams. That is not going to make a good cup of coffee from an entire, well, even from six ounces of water. It's just, it's not gonna work. And it to get this whole 16 ounces in here, you would cause another problem. You actually have to continuously settle it. You can see, obviously, I mean, that much coffee in this little thing. The only way you're getting it in here is to pack it in, and then you have a big problem in that the water won't be able to circulate because the coffee will be too finely packed in there. So while the idea is nice, for coffee, this doesn't work. For tea, on the other hand, it does, because tea, you aren't going to use as much, and it's going to be loose leaf and not packable anyway. So you're going to end up with a much better result with tea. But with coffee, not so good. All right, so let's do, do this just because we can here. So I actually put six teaspoons in here, so you can see how filled I made that. Um, the instructions say that to maximize a, a strong cup of coffee. Hang on a second, I've got to put this down. A strong cup of coffee, you're actually supposed to try and let this bloom. And I don't know how in the hell you do that because you can't pour the water directly into this, but let's do this anyway. Put it in here, and I'm going to use a typical, I mean, let's go with a, a lighter dose that you would see in a V60. So let's use 256 grams of water. Um, so we'll start this because you're supposed to let it bloom for a minute. Oh, my timer's busted. How about we get a different one? There we go. So let's 256 grams of water. Which is going to end up being quite light, probably. Probably. 
call that close enough. So this is supposed to bloom for a minute and it's starting to turn brown. It looks like weak water. That's all the coffee left over, by the way, from 16 grams. I took six teaspoons out. All right, now we're supposed to stir 10 times. Um, I don't know what that means, but sure, okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And now we sip for another minute. Then we stir for another 10 times. And just for fun, let's go the opposite direction. Why the hell not? All right, here we go, 10 times. And it says you're supposed to hold it by this because this part can get hot and it is heating up a little bit. It's not too hot, but okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. And now we push this to re several times to release the maximum flavor. Don't know how many times as many is, so that was a couple times. And now we have coffee. Because I can, let's see what we end up with here. Let's take this out. Not a lot of water draining, which is interesting. Let's see if we can... Uh, Express something by, and we can get a little bit of water out of there. Oh, that was interesting. So there's water trapped in there. That's hopefully getting more of the goodness out. Let's see what we ended up with here. A tremendous amount of sludge comes out. That's not yummy. And the coffee. It looks dark-ish. I mean, it looks like coffee. But I don't know about that sludge. And here's what came out when I emptied it. Um, so it's pretty well soaked. All the grounds got soaked through. It's steaming in there. Um... Yeah, so anyway, final press. There it is. Let's taste it. Yeah, it's coffee-flavored water. In fact, it's lightly coffee-flavored water. Yeah, so overall, um, I have to say that this is a Kickstarter failure. Um, it just doesn't work, at least not for coffee. For tea, um, I think this will work just fine. For coffee, uh-uh.